the same attitude he was full that full description is given in philippians chapter 3 if i read from chapter 3 verses 3 to 10 i will read for we are the circumcision who worship god in the spirit rejoice in christ jesus and have no confidence in the flesh though i also have, might have confidence in the flesh if anyone else thinks that he may have confidence in the flesh i even more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of israel of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew of the hebrew concerning the law of pharisi concerning zeal persecuting the church concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gain to me these i have counted loss yet indeed i count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that i may gain christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in christ the righteousness which is from god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death if we look at the three verses which we read from verses 3 to 6 we find what type of a person he was he was boasting about his circumcision circumcised on the eighth day he was of the stock of israel of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew of the hebrew concerning the law of pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless this is what he had to talk about himself he gloried so much in it in it that the people were all carried away by by him and they wanted they had kept him as an example of those who were persecuting the church they found no fault in him he was called Saul of Tarsus he was a terror among the among the christians who believed in christ because he was for the tradition of the traditions which he followed he was so much engaged in it that the people appreciated it but a terror to those who are of christ but we see such a person now telling in galatians chapter 6 and verse 14 god forbid that i should boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ this is after he learned from the experience which he had on the way to damascus when god arrested him and revealed himself to him that there was a total change in all his attitude all his interactions everything changed this conversion was very important and that importance has brought into significance the purpose of his life for christ which also has to be our purpose and our aim he says that he did not glory in himself but only in the cross of our lord jesus christ the glory of uh, of the cross is a picture it is a picture of love it is a picture of tolerance it's a picture of endurance to every believer paul learned the same ex- had the same experience when he looked at the cross and started glorying about the cross the title which he gave to our lord our lord jesus christ is that particular word lord the glory of paul he was most remarkable in this that he put that word lord he was about everything for him that in those days particularly during the time of apostle paul it was a cross was a symbol of ignominy ignominy associated only with most degraded man of sin the death of our, of the lord jesus on the cross turned uh, the cross into a symbol of life and blessing 
And that's why we see a change in the life of Apostle Paul. That is the very thing which has brought a change in our life also. The change has to be that a person, when he accepts the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't experience any uh, physical change. But there is a mental change. The attitude changes. He sets his faith on Christ in fullness. We see that fullness of the change coming in when a person uh, behaves in, the, in a particular manner. When he accepts him as Lord and God, we see that the change starts coming in his life. The, that title magnifies in his uh, personal glory. We see in Apostle Paul that magnification coming into existence. He was glorying only in the cross and uh, make him most desirable. Whatever we see in Apostle Paul's life, we see that the life of Christ was being manifested in and through him. He always said he is the Lord. He states because states this because he found God in him. This assurance we have only when Christ starts indwelling in us and experience and we starts experiencing the power of God which is working through us, that is through his Holy Spirit. He, he learned how efficacious it was to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. The purpose for which he uh, remained suspended on the cross. The work he has come to do was not a work uh, which anybody could have thought of. He was coming to do a work by which we would be able to come into his presence with thanksgiving and praises. We who were condemned were destined to die. The work he has come to do was not very heavy for him, but because that willingness was there, he came and did it so willingly that nobody could understand that he had suffered a painful, uh, uh, he did not say that it was a very painful death for me. He uh, counted it all joy that he is enduring this pain and affliction for our sake. His righteousness would justify all our sins. That was the uh, purpose for which he came. His blood would procure pardon, pardon for all we sinners. What a great work which, he, uh, which our Lord did on the cross of Calvary. Isn't it wonderful? When we look at the cross, we are speaking about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, we, which he had for us. When we look at the cross, we are seeing him as a person who was crucified, not because he, he committed any crime there, but the crime which we have committed, he was being substituted for that. Next, Paul gives him his human name, that is Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Jesus means Jehovah, the Savior. It is heaven's chosen name, as we read in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, 21. See, he came to save his people from sin. Such was the design of his coming into the world that he got eternal redemption for us. What a wonderful name, isn't it? Jesus. Jehovah the Savior. This is the meaning. And what a design it is that he came to save sinners. That's why we consider it a sweetest, sweet name. Who, has, who, who have seen the exceeding uh, sig uh, uh, significance? Who has seen the exceeding grace in themselves and who have realized it will understand the sweetness. If we have not 
tasted it, we will never be able to experience that sweetness. So the one who has experienced, who has tasted bitterness, when he is given something sweet, he tells you in good conviction what is the difference between sweetness and, and bitterness. That sweetness we have in Christ our Lord, because we were exceedingly full, filled with sin, that we had lost our uh, knowledge of sweetness. But when sweetness came to us through our Lord Jesus Christ, as he had made eternal redemption for us on the cross, we understand that sweetness. And that sweetness was understood by Apostle Paul. And what a change we see coming into his life. There was a complete change in his life, life uh, exuberance that he showed it to the people. And, and people could see that change in him. And the zeal for Christ overtook the zeal of persecution of the church in his earlier days. Then he is spoken of as Christ. First as Jesus, the meaning is Jehovah the Savior. Now as Christ, which in Hebrew translation would be Messiah. And encloses within itself the meaning of three offices. That is prophet, priest and king. His precious how precious is the name to those who wait for him. In ancient times, they were, he, he became so precious. In the New Testament, we see when Andrew was, had spent the day with him. And in the evening, when he meets his brother, Simon Peter, he says that we have found the Messiah. What a wonderful testimony he gave to the to his brother, we have found the Messiah. What does it mean? We have found the Messiah. For him, the quest is over. No more searching, no more agony of waiting. We have no more agony of seeking. Everything has ended. He has found the secret of life. That is, the Messiah has come to him. And that is what we all experience. When we have experienced that, when we have that experience, sweetness and uh, the sweetness of his company, what a joy it will be for us to always keep speaking about our Lord to whoever comes to us. We do not consider the condition in which we are. We, are. we do not consider the situation in which we are. We may be in this world in a in a tight position but if we realize that our lord is in our heart he is watching over us he is looking at us what have we to fear but only speak and praise the name of our lord jesus christ the cross then the the power of god is manifested in the cross this is what Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. We'll just read that verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 18, 1 verse 18. That it is foolishness to them who, who perish. The gospel of salvation is foolishness for them who perish. But it is the power of God to do those who are being saved. Isn't it wonderful to understand this particular aspect and live for him? Then we have understood that it is the power of God to those who are being saved. We have nothing in this world to do but to express the love of God to others. First fact of Christian gospel and is that it means to save sinners. The First content of the gospel is that Christ came to save sinners. And this is what we have to express to us. We who are called Christians, 
have been called to do this, that we always keep expressing the power of God and the love of God by saying that Christ died for you and for me. It has in it the doctrine of atonement. Our Lord Jesus Christ laid, his, laid down his life for us. He gave himself a ransom for us. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us. He shed his blood to purge our sins. And upon that cross, the blessed Son of God was made a sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is what is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. He became a sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is the doctrine of atonement which has come through the cross. The power of God has been delivered to us that we are no more condemned to die but to live and that to live for Christ. The cross always displays the character of God. All attributes of God are exercised in him. All are united or compounded to make the sacrifice efficacious, to meet every demand of the law, to silence every accusation of Satan. How great and glorious, how astonishing and unparalleled, how matchless and boundless, how unchanging and everlasting is his love in the word of the cross. This cross depicts to us the power which is there. It has an unparalleled history. It has, it speaks to us continually of the power that we are gaining. Now we are in the world for a particular period of time. Everybody has got a period of time. This is an occasion that we can exercise the power of God to manifest for who Christ was and the purpose for which he came, the love which he had for us and the love which we can express it to us. If we become Christ, we become, when we become Christ, we become Christ-like. That means when we, we are in the midst of the people, they should be able to see Christ in us, that we should be the changing factor in their life. We should be able to change their life by, by their looking at us. His unchanging and everlasting love for us is the word of, word of the cross. It is there and there alone that a full atonement has been paid and utmost ransom paid. When a person is caught and somebody asks for a ransom, unless that ransom is paid, he is not set free. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. And that wages of sin of death was paid by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Suffering, humiliation, shame, agony, all for us. Unless that was paid, however, we would not have been set free. We would have been kept under the bondage of sin. We would have been kept under that punishment. And we would have that fear all throughout our life. But today there is no fear in us because God has removed that fear from us. He has given us a spirit of adoption and it is because of that spirit of adoption we come to him with the words like Abba Father. What a wonderful privilege it is. But it is necessary that part that man must receive it and exercise his faith upon it. When a ransom has been paid and he is set free, we who have experienced that our freedom has been brought to our Lord Jesus Christ, but if we do not realize that situation, we are still in that state of condemnation. That's why it becomes necessary for each one of us to exercise that faith. That faith should be there in it. It will bring us little comfort if we do not exercise that faith. It will do us little service unless 
we can in some measure appropriate it to our to ourselves saying with the apostle he saved me and gave himself for me if we don't appropriate this faith we will not be much benefited but we will all, always be agonizing on the fact that i have in a uh, in a, a precarious situation it is faith look at the cross as having a peculiar interest in its love which makes it work efficacious efficient effi, effi, effectively in us to heal our wounds to relieve our terror to remove our sin and reconstitute us into a new creation unless we repose our faith on the love of of the cross unless we repose our faith for the purpose for which it was done we will not be able to relieve ourselves from the fear which is in us we are always looking at something which has which we have committed and uh, the pain of agonizing pain of fear starts encroaching upon us it we are always in a terror if that sins are not removed we we do not be, become a new creation we are still suffering in that soul old cre creation that is our old self that is the uh, that is in darkness but when we have been reconstituted by the power of god into a new creature we experience the joy the love and the peace which prevails in our heart today in many situations we see in the happenings which we see on the tv we see a man being thrashed by uh, by people for passing on a, a, a message or sms and we find people uh, throwing abuses and hitting him such a bad situation we may not do it, we may not be doing it ourselves but in our mind we may be thinking of many things if we have had a quarrel with someone we start envying him we start thinking many things about him if i would have had this i would have done this we may not be actually doing it but we may be thinking many things if we we may not be having money but we may be thinking about others money even if we may not be thinking about others money we may be thinking that if i had so much money i would have done this and this so many things we start making in our mind and spoiling our mind and bringing agony and shame to ourselves if we if we think about the person who has brought a big loss to us we may not be actually hitting him but we may be thinking of uh, even murdering him it is that thought which has to be refined it is that thought which has to be removed that removal of thought comes only when we put our trust in the lord jesus christ in full the power of god working in us for we are we know this for sure that a period of time has been given to man while in the course of this world we are in that pilgrims progress we are have we have to go according to the path which our lord has laid for us the ways of the world are crooked we are in this crooked and perverse generation as lamps to shine among them we have to hold fast the faith which we have been given by our lord jesus christ that faith which will lead us to eternal life of peace and eternal peace and a life uh, and a life without agony while we are on this earth a life of peace with our family members with our relatives with our friends with our colleagues in the office and in on in, in the society in general but if our lord is with us we have all this peace and the things which he has done for us by the ransom which he has paid for us by exercising the faith which we have put on him 
put on him for the work which he has completed on the cross of Calvary. That's why when we have experienced this joy and peace, we have to keep on glorifying the our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? That means we have to glorify the cross. Galatians 6, 14 says, for me to, uh, uh, Galatians chapter, uh, for it is not right for me to boast, but because the whole world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Things of the world cannot bring a, purchases anything for us, but the blood of Jesus Christ has brought redemption and peace to us. Paul is a master of logic. He is a very intelligent man. Before his conversion also, he was for the traditions which were to be followed. He was going according to the logic of that. He, it never bothered him to persecute the church, persecute the people of God. But when he changed, when he was arrested by God on the way to Damascus, we see that he was a person totally changed. Again, by reason of logic and experience, we see that he loved God more than himself. He wanted to know the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. He counted all things lost for him. Whatever things of this world which he had possessed, he was able to sacrifice for the sake of the, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. And after that faith in Christ, he had nothing else to speak. He did not want to speak about, the, the, about his untiring energy uh, on the things of this world, but only on things of Christ. All, he said, all things are, which were gained for me, I counted loss for the excellence of knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he also says, for me to live is Christ, for me is die, uh, to die is gain. What a wonderful statement he made. That should be the statement of every believer. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. Because if I die, I go to Christ. I will be with him forever. But while this opportunity is there for us, while on this earth, we have this privilege. This is a privilege which has been given to us that we live for Christ. We proclaim his word. We express his love. People in this world who have not read the Bible, they are looking at us. We are the Bible today in front of them. They will be reading us. But if we do things which they also do, that it makes no difference. But what we do is stands out and shows the others what they are doing is wrong. They will see, they will uh, note you and say, this is a different person. He is a man of Christ. Christ is in him. And that is what which has to come from each one of us. People should be able to read us and tell that Christ is dwelling in us. Apostle Paul swept aside all else and tells us that he glories only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to do the same thing. We have to keep all things away and say that I glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Cross is a symbol of love for us. It has to become a symbol of love to others also. When people look at us, they will see the cross in us. They will see our Lord in us and the symbol of love which is overflowing through in and through our affairs of this world. This is an opportunity which, has, which God has given, not an opportunity to boast on our appearance, upon our clothing, upon our bank balances, upon, our, upon the vehicles which we possess, upon the bungalows in which we live, but the simplicity in which we live and boasting about our Lord Jesus Christ. We have something to boast, which is much above all the things of this world. Our Lord is the creator of this own, whole universe. My Lord is a rich God. He has 
the whole creation in the in his fist but we are not boasting about it we want to boast about ourselves we want to boast about the things of this world and we think that uh, i think like if we think like this we become more and more miserable but the difference is when we start speaking about christ and thinking about uh, about christ and thinking of his love and how we can express that love to others we find a whole new world of rejoicing and glorifying and praising god we get an opportunity to praise and adore and to worship him in truth and in spirit this wonderful opportunity we have got because of the love of our lord jesus christ which he has shown to us we experience this joy when we come as christians together to worship god and to exchange and the praises and to glorify his name more and more we experience that peace when one speaks to other about the about our lord jesus christ we experience the joy when we see our fellow christians and see that he is also able to adore and worship because of the love which has come to him it all happens when christ starts working in us the spirit is given a free hand to work in us the spirit of god the holy spirit manifests himself through us that we may not fall short of words we may not keep our mouth shut but we may be able to be more vociferous in the presence of the people and in the presence of his congregation may god bless this word to us that is uh, particularly galatians uh, chapter 6 and verse 14 may god bless it to us thank you